the podcasters and welcome to Sexplosion. My name is Caroline Shenier and I'm your coach on all things intimacy, relationship, sex and super consciousness. This is my podcast teaching you about how to sexually liberate yourself to be confident, spicy and fun around intimacy and sex, along with learning about how to build a great foundation for strong, long lasting and passionate relationships. It is unfiltered, uncensored and very unexpected. Today's topic is all about sex and menopause. My beautiful guest, Pat Duckworth, and I will be discussing what happens sexually before and after menopause and what to do to fix a low sex drive. So Pat is a woman's wellness and workplace menopause strategist. Pat is also a best-selling author, an international speaker, and specialist in the area of wellness and menopause. She enjoyed a 30-year career in British civil service, becoming a director in a major department. She's written five books on the subject of women's health at midlife. And in 2021, her book, Menopause, Mind the Gap, was given a 9 out of 10 rating by Get Abstract. And Pat has won many awards and worked with many private and public organizations. So, Pat... A very warm and sexy welcome to Sexplosion. A sexy hello back to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Pat, let's start with the bodily facts on how menopause affects a woman's sex life. This is such a huge subject. I've been thinking about it today. Where do we start this story? And everything I say is general because every woman's experience of menopause is individual to them. Although there's some generalities, I know that some women will be going, well, that didn't happen to me, but think about it. The changes you're undergoing at menopause are like the opposite end to what happened to you when you went through puberty. So just as some girls go through puberty with like one spot and then they're done, other girls like for years are having mood swings and Hot acne flushes. and oh, everything. It's the same at menopause. Some women will go through it earlier than others. Some will have worse symptoms than others. So everything I say is general. So don't shout at the podcast. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> generally, when we get to our mid-20s, our reproductive hormones, estrogen and progesterone, start to reduce. So as early as your mid-20s, you don't really start experiencing it until your late 30s, early 40s. But estrogen is responsible or has a role in over 200 functions in the body. Wow. I don't know how men don't experience this the same way. But anyway, so we have four types of estrogen and the estrogen levels are reducing as we start to approach our late 40s and early 50s. And because estrogen affects so many processes in the body, that's why you can get so many different symptoms. So how it can affect you physically and can affect your libido, well, firstly, you may not be sleeping as well as you used to. Sleep is often one of the first victims of being in perimenopause, which is the years leading up to menopause. So you might not be sleeping as well, and if you're tired, you're not going to fancy it as much as you used to. It can cause you to feel more anxious because the effect it has on your adrenal glands. Again, anxiety is not a great thing for foreplay. Um, it can affect your confidence, your confidence in yourself, your confidence in your body. And then really physically, the reduction in estrogen affects your skin. So that's not just the skin on your face, your hands, your arms, it affects the skin of the vagina and the vagina be can become much more fragile. It becomes drier, the skin becomes thinner. It's much less juicy than it used to be. So that can have a real effect on your enjoyment of sex. It's just not fair, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my God. you know, men can go through that thing of, having, you know, harder to sustain erections. So, True. you know, it's not all one sided. It's just that, you know, you might just be getting to a stage where the kids are leaving home and you're really thinking, wow, we're going to have so much more time for sex and enjoying ourselves. And suddenly your vagina is going, I don't think so. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> it is so sad. And so I, I what I really want to say is that having a lower libido 
isn't necessarily like this is the end because there just seems to be this mindset around once you get to menopause, you're not going to want sex anymore. It's not going to be comfortable. You're shutting up shop. It's over. And that's just not the case. So I'm kind of buying into what you do, Caroline, because I think this is so important for women. And a recent report said that women's sexual health is very important for their emotional and mental health. God, it is. And you know what? Just before uh, coming is I'm, I'm actually doing this in my car today because I'm actually out. I actually sing. Um, I'm singing. Oh. I'm singing Queen songs. Um, it's weird because my husband's in a, he's been in a choir for 20 years. He's like, choir? And he sings requiems and stuff like that. And he goes, Caroline, would you, you know, once I moved to Paris, he said, would you like to, to join? I said, uh, I said, well, um, well, I don't want to sing requiems. I prefer singing, you know, pop songs in the car. He goes, oh, well, you know, we're putting Queen next year in another, uh, another choir. Would you like to come? Out? Yeah. Okay, that's great. So I've been doing that. So today is a, is a rehearsal for all the, the arm actions and the dancing. So I've actually come out in my car. And the, the point of me telling you all that is because just before coming out, I'm having to tell people, well, I'm leaving. And they're going, so, so, and I said, well, I've got, I've got to do a podcast in my car. Pod, what's the podcast about? So here in France, it's all very Catholic, you see. And all the women I spoke to, which are on my age, they, I said, um, well, it's all about sex. And, and I'm, immediately they're going to start thinking really dirty stuff. And I'm like, no, no, this is about, you know, sexually liberating yourself. And today is all about menopause. So actually it's relevant to all these women. Right. Yeah. And they're going, oh, 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 like that. that because that, because clearly they do that. She said it's still really taboo here. And I'm like, wow, it's so bad that women do not speak about anything sexual. Even when I was in my sexual peak, you know, when I was going crazy, like like I mentioned before on your radio show, like when I was going mad and I couldn't get off this flipping sex train, it was just like taking over my life. It's the same. People don't talk about it. There are some younger women that do, you know. There's some younger women that it's becoming a bit, and even men are talking a bit about it more now. But but you're absolutely right. And I'm so glad that you do this work because, again, your work, a workplace strategist so again you know what women don't understand well when I say women I'm talking about managers as well whether they're men yes. or women I mean women okay they might be getting the symptoms they don't even know what's going on with themselves either yeah. you know with the memory maybe hair loss the joints um putting on weight and like you said about the skin and they don't realize even the mood swings and the hot flashes they don't they don't realize what's going on to be able to integrate that into the workplace and especially men the poor old men have got absolutely no frigging idea <laughs> what's going on with their wives why do they not want to do it anymore and of course the wife is making a load of excuses as to why they don't, but they don't know why they don't want to do it. they just no. don't feel like it and it's a real shame because actually this can ruin a lot of relationships because I know a lot of women um my age where of course the men still want to do it and they you know and they, the men think well why don't they fancy me anymore what's yeah. going on and the women don't apart, apart from not realizing they're not communicating are they pat well they don't understand themselves because women don't understand what's going on and for some reason they won't like look it up and find out i mean you know i talk about it very openly and because I think this is such an important part of it, and it's, you know, women will ask me questions on podcasts, on workshops. They'll ask me about the hot flushes, the sleep, the anxiety. But it's going to be a brave woman who says to me, so what's going on for me sexually? And I've actually done workshops for a group of women where I've gone through it and explained it and where they felt safe enough to say, OK, so what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? You know, because we need to talk about it really openly. And at the moment, I'm, you know, I've written five nonfiction books about menopause, but I'm just writing a novel because I think if I can write a novel that's funny and that women engage with, they're going to learn while they're they reading are. the novel. And so I've got my main character and she's, I feel sorry for this character because I'm giving her all the worst stuff. <laughs> That's really good, though, because every woman that's going to read that book will identify with something, won't they? Because like yeah. you said at the beginning, every woman's different. So, yeah, that's really good. And and you know what? That is such a good way because women aren't going to go and look it up, are they? 
So yeah. you're actually <laughs> tapping in to tons of women that wouldn't normally go and look up what's wrong with them. Oh, it's a fantastic uh, idea, Pat. Yeah, so this poor woman, her husband, she still fancies her husband, but every time they try and have sex, it's like not as good as it was, and then it's really Hurts. painful. Yeah. And so she's going off to the doctor, and she doesn't want to talk to her friends about it, you know. And it's everything that women experience. And I'm just trying to explain it through this character that I'm giving. I even sent her on holiday with her husband and they've had very like <laughs> not good sex. And, and then the next day I give her an unexpected period as well. I thought, I feel oh, so sorry yeah. for this woman. I've sent her on holiday and now I've given her a period. <laughs> I think that's amazing. So are you actually um, addressing the men in this as well, in this fiction book? Um. It, it's more about the women, but there are, you know, all of the women have partners. One has a female partner because can you imagine right. going through all the turmoil of this at the same time as your female partner's God, going through yeah. it as well? Yeah, I never um, thought about that. Absolutely. But I've given each of them, one of them is in a brand new relationship. So she doesn't want to talk about it at all because she's having a lot of fun and she doesn't want anything to happen to it. And then another character is going through an early hysterectomy. I am throwing the kitchen sink at these women. Bloody <laughs> hell. Absolutely incredible. And so um, so uh, we've mentioned as some things. Are there, I mean, there are other things like joint pain, okay? So, yeah. yeah. So what, in your opinion, what causes the joint pain? Is it the estrogen again? It's. It's always the estrogen. It just always is because it affects other things. Like we think about it as affecting our reproductive system, but it's affecting how we digest food. It's affecting our nervous wow. system. It's affecting our brain function. It affects how we absorb and deal with sugar, which is why sugar becomes a much bigger issue as we get to this stage of life. Wow. It affects our gut biome. So we really have to think holistically. It's not, there's no silver bullet. You might think, oh, if I took hormone therapy, well, yeah, that would, you know, it could help you. But that you, you know, if you think about it holistically, you've got to think about your diet, your exercise, your lifestyle, how you deal with your stress. It's all important to this stage of life. Yeah. And the thing about um, the joints, mm is and you said you mentioned the exercise as well and the food of course because you see what I found like I've always gone to the gym every day apart from, well even at weekends but I do give myself a day off sometimes at the moment I've had an operation so I've not done any but COVID we're not allowed to yeah. say that anymore on the radio um <laughs> right it, it has really it really taught me a big lesson you see because apart from going through the menopause and apart from the food that perhaps I was eating that's bad, because I wasn't doing the exercise anymore, I was getting even more stiff. And of course, yeah. with the effect of the menopause too, it actually got to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't actually open my legs properly. Yeah. And so and not only that, like, I'm going to talk, you know, doggy here, right? You're having to bend your legs and like, be, you know, whatever position you do, you have to bend your legs. And I'm more like a, like a, uh, one that's like got its bottom right up in the end and my hands are down right so so my legs are really bent well I tell you what afterwards I can't even straighten up afterwards <laughs> and it really does affect the, the 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 everything it's not just the insides in your in your vagina is it it's all no. of that too and yeah. the other thing of course um and you've touched on it right at the beginning is you don't feel you know, because you put on weight and your skin starts changing, your hair, yeah. maybe your hair, you know, there are a lot of women that, that also experience hair loss and yes. they feel unattractive yeah. and they actually don't even want to take their clothes off, you know, with the light on. They don't want yeah. their husbands. And I do, I, I have to admit, I sometimes feel that. I sometimes yeah. do. And my husband keeps telling me, Caroline, you're not fat. And when I look at myself in the mirror, because I've got a lot, I'm not that fat. But you know, when you got it in your head yes. that you might not be as attractive. And I think many, many women, um, apart from not feeling like it, actually feel terrible in themselves. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, a lot of sex goes on in our heads. 
our heads are responsible for like how excited we get. It's not just a physical response. It's a mental and spiritual response. You said spiritual right up front. And there's a lot going on for us that's bigger than just what's going on in our bodies at this stage of life. And I'm a hypnotherapist. That's one of the therapy types, modes that I use. And it's around changing the mindset around this. It's very hard to find positive words around menopause. We're, mm -hmm. we're programmed to see it as a really negative thing. Whereas if you speak to women the other side, and I'm way the other side of it now, we know that we suddenly get more energy. We feel more passionate about life. We feel passionate about what we think our purpose is and that passion comes back so you know while you're not feeling entirely well it's hard to feel passionate which is why we have to do all these little adjustments to diet and exercise and everything else to get our bodies feeling okay because the other side of it you're going to feel great and you are going to not care as much about anything as you did care beforehand you're going to go well you know my hair's not looking great today do you know what? I don't care. I'm not looking at my hair all day long. And but I think it's really important to look in the mirror through the eyes of your spirit. The thing that's like inside of you that is the essence of you, because I can look in the mirror and I can see all of the little creases and lines and all. Oh, where did that spot come from? My spirit looks through my eyes and goes, you're doing pretty good girl keep going you know we're here we're doing great work we're just carrying on my spirit smiles at me so we have to get into that place where we're loving ourselves enough to look after ourselves and just go yeah you're doing a great job it's those messages we put into our subconscious yes. mind right because our subconscious mind doesn't know what's real and what isn't real it just says whatever message goes in okay yep yeah, i'll action that yeah. so when we and, and the trouble is it's all completely unconscious we just mull around with these words are going into our heads these negative things going in our heads oh i'm not you know we don't realize how damaging that is yeah and yeah. so well, like you're saying if they say what you're saying to say every day if you know that um that Gok Kwan, when he mm. does that, um, look good naked. At mm. first, those women are a right mess, aren't they? A real mess. Yeah, they can't yeah. even look in the mirror. It's the yeah. same kind of thing. And by the end of the, 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 the episode, that woman's loving herself because she's been encouraged to say all the right things. And the trouble is, is that we're all on our own, aren't we? We don't hear people like you and I encouraging and, and saying, look, this isn't the real you. The real you is actually the one inside. You're telling yourself you're with this, but yeah. actually you're not. And everybody around you doesn't see the same thing. It's what we actually, you know, it's the damage we give ourselves that makes us feel so, uh, but yeah, absolutely. So women have to like start changing the narrative, don't they? We do. And we have to encourage each other. We've got to, it's important to have allies at menopause and that could be women and it can be men. You know, as women, we need to support each other. And if you see somebody who's looking good, say, you're looking good today. I saw an old lady in the car park. When I say an old lady, I'm not that young myself. But, you know, she was really very slim. She was beautifully dressed up and she put her pearls on and she was only going to the shops. And I just had to go up to her and say, I just love the way you look because you don't know what effect that has on that person. Yeah. You know, she was walking awkwardly. She obviously had some hip problems, but just to be told you look good makes you straighten up a bit and feel a bit better. So as women, don't pull other women down, help to raise them up. This is why what you're doing, what I'm doing is so important because we have to get these positive messages out to women. I went to a a webinar, well, not a webinar, I'm so used to saying webinar, I went to a, a women's meeting in London this week, and there were women from the five continents, um, they'd come just for this meeting, which was incredible, and some of them were wearing the outfits of their countries, their cultural outfits, wow. others were wearing Western clothes, there were Indian clothes, African clothes, South American, beautiful colours, and then. I kept going up to women and saying, you look amazing, and, and they're like oh you know what women do oh this old thing yeah but at some level and that would have made their day that would have made their day pat and if somebody compliments you don't go oh not this old thing if somebody compliments you they're giving you a gift it's like they've it's wrapped true. something up they've 
probably gone out on a bit of a limb to say something to you. Accept the present of it. Go, thank you. That's really kind of you. Don't go, oh, this old thing, or oh, I got it, got it from TK Maxx. <laughs> it was cheap. Yeah. No, and accept the present. Exactly. <laughs> and and the, I think it's something to do with the British culture that we have to pull ourselves down and say, oh, you know, like if you say someone says to you, um, if you say to someone, oh, that's a nice top, oh, it's really old. Yeah. Oh, I got it from my, you yeah. know, bargain. <laughs> corner whatever it's called or I got it in the mark you know what isn't it funny how oh, we're no. how we're, we're brainwashed to, 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 to put down our, our our greatness but yeah you know I do the same as you I was uh I was in um where was I now? I was in uh oh yeah there's this trainee at the till at the supermarket yesterday and she had these amazing nails I could see they were stuck on but they were beautiful little designs on and I said you got beautiful nails and then there's there's this woman um, at at the uh, the choir who is um, she's in a wheelchair, but she looks absolutely amazing. I'm trying to find the time to actually go and tell her because she's mm. incredible, and and I'm the same as you. I'll tell people in the bank. Well, when they say in the bank, when there's one that's there because they're yeah. closing down, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, and and yeah, absolutely right. Um, and I know that's made that person stay. And my husband's not used to it. I mean, he's. No. People don't really, people talk in front. So I say, good morning. The, you're walking in the street and people will say hello to you. That is really different. I love that. But people don't really chit chat and I'll just talk to everybody. And my husband's going to me, he's like looking at me as if to say, what, what are you just talking to anybody? Do you know, you know, and they say, do you know, no, of course I don't know that person. But yeah, it, it really does make a massive difference because not everyone will give someone a compliment like that. And it no. will make their day, make them feel great. Yeah, and in terms of, of relationships and sexual relationships, just saying to your partner, you're looking good today, or I love your hair, or whatever, it starts that feeling going does, so that does. they start to feel good. When we give somebody a compliment, we feel good about the kindness that we've shown them, and they feel good because we've done it. So it just helps to start building the intimacy and the trust around that relationship. Yeah, definitely. And I think the other big thing about this is communication, isn't it? So so they mm. might not realise what's going on with themselves, but they have to tell their partner because he's thinking that she doesn't love them anymore. Doesn't. Fact, of course, it's not that at all. Yeah. So that's the other really important thing is to sit down. And obviously, it's a really difficult subject for many women to discuss yeah. and men as well and so um you know the important thing is to is to sit them down in, a, in an area where you know it's not just a fleeting conversation when they're cooking or something like that or just watching you know it's take them somewhere in a space yeah. where they don't get distracted distracted and actually say look I'm going to talk to you about something which is really difficult for me to talk about and I'd like yeah. to you know talk to you about it and, and just listen to me first of all and then and I'd like us to talk about it and I think if women and men, if men's watching, to or listening rather, because it's podcast, isn't it? Um, if they uh, talk like that, it would make such a difference to people's relationships, wouldn't it, Pat? Absolutely. We have to be able to talk with each other, to communicate. I mean, we communicate with our words. We communicate with our actions, just the way we look and we move. And it's sort of bringing our awareness to it, whether we're subconsciously pushing somebody away I mean even just like doing this with the hands like oh yeah let's talk about this later all of that is saying I don't want to talk about this whereas if it's like can we talk about this later you know palms up open yeah. that's very different so we have to really think about what we're saying and how we're saying it as well really important okay so pat that's all the things the horrible things what is it that we can do to naturally or even you know the doctor that can help us with this to to get past this this time because it does go past it does eventually go but yeah yeah and and if you want to be having sex in your 60s and 70s make sure you're having it in your 40s and 50s it's not going to happen by a magic wand or you know perhaps your partner does have a magic wand <laughs> uh, <laughs> later in life you've got to be regularly engaging in your relationship so uh, if we go back to medically I mentioned hormone replacement therapy not for everybody not everybody wants to take it 
but there are also what are called topical hormones. Now, topical hormone treatments are where you apply the hormone directly to the area that's affected. So if you've got vaginal dryness that's being caused by lack of hormones, you can buy estrogen creams. Well, I say buy. Up until now, they've been on prescription. So you'd have to talk to your doctor or the practice nurse about it. And you can get vaginal rings that have estrogen in them. You can get pessaries. You can get vaginal creams that you can apply topically to that area. That doesn't mean you're on hormone replacement therapy. It's very low levels of the hormone. It's not raising the hormone generally in your system. It's just raising it in the area that's affected. So that can be a way to overcome vaginal dryness. But there are lots of things that we can do with our diet. And I think that is really important. I think I'd like to kind of start there Let's because what there. we're eating is really important to our. Um, so we have biome in our vagina. That might sound awful, but we do have like communities of bacteria that live in our vagina. And it's a good thing. They're keeping it in balance. And as we head into menopause, that balance can start to go off. And uh, we have actually an acidity, a certain acidity in our vagina. So think about it as soil that you're planting in. You know, the soil in the garden, you can get pH tests done to see if it's acidic or whether it's alkaline. Oh. <laughs> We're not testing our vaginas, but we do know that it's important to keep that acidic balance there. And um, so it's about what we're eating and what we're using around our vagina becomes really important. So the first rule of thumb is if you wouldn't put it in your mouth, don't put it in your vagina. Um, because, you know, things that are chemical, things that have lots of scents mm. in them, things that if you read it on the um, on the list of ingredients, it's got stuff with chemical names in it. If you don't know what it is why are you apply, uh, applying it to this really delicate area of your body it really is delicate isn't it it really is delicate and it gets more delicate at this stage as the skin is thinning and drying we've got to take more care of it so the sort of foods we should be eating the oily fish the mackerel the salmon because we need the omega-3 oils to help us to say nice and juicy um, there are things called phytoestrogens, they're plant estrogens, and they help to supplement the estrogens in our body. And it's things like chickpeas, lentils, the fermented soyas like miso, tempeh, tofu. Um, one of the things that is your real friend at menopause is linseeds or flax seeds. They've got lots of omega-3 in them. They've got phytoestrogens, plant estrogens. They've got lots of fiber in them. So um, get out there, get your linseeds, sprinkle them on your breakfast cereal or in your smoothies or in your baking, yeah. whatever. They are real friends. Um, any probiotic rich foods, so any fermented foods are helpful for your gut biome and in turn that helps your vaginal biome. Ginger. I love ginger. I love fresh ginger. I love fresh ginger covered in chocolate as well, but that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> but ginger is very good, very antibacterial, so it can be really helpful. Avocados because of the oils that are in them. Green tea, very antioxidant. Um, I drink a matcha latte every morning. That's how middle class I am. Um, but matcha is very good for its antioxidants, mm. even though it's got caffeine in it, really good for your system. Garlic as, you know, very antibacterial. Fresh fruit and vegetables, really important as well. I mean, generally, the thinking now is that a Mediterranean style diet is very good for our health at menopause. Wow. So we're really talking about low levels of, of carbohydrate because carbohydrate converts into sugars. So and that's more not products. rice or potatoes, um, pasta. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to eat those, then eat whole food versions of them. But honestly, only small amounts of carbohydrate. Our bodies need some carbohydrate, but the complex carbohydrates are better. You just don't want to eat too much of it because your body has trouble um, actually digesting and converting yeah. it. And then it goes to sugar anyway, doesn't it? Which And it goes to want. sugar and it gets stored. And then you wonder why you're building up fat around your waist. So low carbohydrate, lean protein, 
lots of vegetables, some fruit, making sure you're getting your omega-3s and staying well hydrated. We really need to be well hydrated for our body function and for our brain function. And if you're thinking of food supplements, um, because sometimes what we're eating just doesn't give us enough of what we need. Again, back to omega-3 oils, because they help to control inflammation. So that inflammation around the joints that makes the aches and pains um, having omega-3 helps to lubricate the body and control the inflation. It, inflation. If <laughs> well, only. that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, inflammation. What about, what about eggs and oysters? Because uh, that, because that's bodily, as in it helps to, you know, um, supplement the vagina, and you know, but but. Would you say that, I mean, I personally don't like oysters, but they say it's a very good aphrodisiac. And they also say a little bit of wine, obviously not a lot, but a little bit of wine, red wine I'm talking about. Yeah, so uh, several questions there. So eggs can be really helpful. Um, some foods, because just as our reproductive hormones are reducing, other hormones are reducing as well. So we're getting less testosterone. Women have testosterone and the levels of it start to decrease. And some foods help you with the testosterone and certainly oysters are one of the things that helps. I don't like oysters. No, I don't. I, I I've just tried, don't like you know, I've texture. tried. It's just like drinking like snot with seawater. No. That's what I think. So <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not really bothered with that. Eggs can be helpful. What was the other thing you said? I lost it. Oh, wine, red wine. So we have to be really careful with red wine. There are really good ingredients in red wine. I can't remember the name of the chemical that's in it. But honestly, to get anything useful from it, you'd have to drink about a gallon and then you'd be flat on your back and not in a good way. Um, and you're probably having hot flushes. And yeah. so uh, the wine industry tends to say, oh, there's lots of good stuff in red wine. There is, but you'd have to drink it in huge quantities. Oh, right. You can get it from other things. So the red veg, the red fruit, you know, the berries, the um, beetroots, uh, the things that have got beta carotene in them can mm. be really helpful. So, you know, think about the redder, oranger vegetables can be really good. Um, think about, you know, if you need to take a probiotic to help you uh, with your gut health. And of course, you know, women can get, and this is another thing that would put you off sex, you can get urinary tract infections because the skin is more delicate so um, you might get cystitis or yeast infections so probiotics can help with that i was getting uh, bv quite a lot actually yeah uh, drinking cr cranberries eating cranberry juice i'm sorry drinking cranberry juice eating cranberries um, that can help um, the wall of the vagina as well and things to avoid foods that have got yeasts oh. in them so bread, anything that's got yeast is not going to be helpful. We've already talked about the sugars, reducing the sugars. The alcohol is honestly not your friend. It is stressing your system out. Um, you might think, oh, but I like my cheeky glass of wine. Well, just watch what happens when you drink it, whether you start to get more symptoms. Just really raising your awareness. Yeah. yeah. And the highly processed foods they're not helping your gut and if it's not helping your gut it's not helping your vagina no. so it's a lot to do there around um what we're eating it really will if, if you know what i would say to women if they are have got a diet where it's a bit you know they're having a lot of trans trans fats and they're and they're having a lot of alcohol and they're having a lot of sugar honestly try a month try a month without i remember i did that i had to do it for something else once and it was amazing i was yeah. sleeping better my cheeks were a bit more rosy they looked i looked more alive i had more energy yeah. um, i could i could i don't know because my body was well rested my body had more my, my actual body was working my muscles yeah. were working better um and honestly and a bit of exercise as well if, if women aren't doing exercise that's another thing even just walking for half an hour a day will make a massive yeah. difference so there's a difference in how you exercise at menopause as well. So long periods of cardiovascular exercise, jogging, running, rowing, is not good for you at this stage of life because it raises the levels of cortisol in your system. Raising the levels of cortisol inflames your body, it inflames your joints. So don't start half marathon running at this stage of life. What you want is a mixture. So yes, the walking, really good for you. Sex is good for you, it's good exercise. 
Um, but also thinking about high intensity interval training, um, resistance training, so weightlifting, <laughs> not, not massive weights, you no, know, like kettlebells or something like yeah. that. Stretching exercises, so yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, the things that give your body an opportunity to stretch and exercise that maintain your muscle strength really important so yeah think about your exercise slightly differently a lot of women go oh i haven't got time make the time you know even if you can just do 10 minutes a day do the 10 minutes a day park the car a bit further from the office and walk a bit yeah. further walk further around the supermarket whatever you do just instead of thinking oh i've gotten something i could go back upstairs think oh i've got an opportunity to walk up and down the stairs again it's the, it's the messages again it's the messages yeah. again that you give yourself, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It really is. Here so, I go being well hydrated again. <laughs> I've got my here. I've got my 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 water in this thing here. I had some before actually starting, but I do actually drink. I I, I used to get a lot of cystitis when I was in my yeah. early thirties, and and the doctor said, look the only thing you have to do is drink water. And mm. so that's what I've been doing for 20 years, pint before I go to bed, about three pints or four pints in the day and another pint before I go to bed. Although recently I've been doing a bit less than that because I didn't want to get up in the night or what I needed to sleep because I was having trouble. But yeah, it makes a massive difference to your skin as well when you, when you drink a lot. People say to me, because you know, I'm 50, 57 years old and people say to me, well, what is it? I think it's the exercise and the food and the water, you know, that's it's the, big... the whole package, though. Yeah. It's the mindset. Yeah. It's the, oh, the feeling, mindset, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it is. You've got to think about it holistically, because otherwise you're just missing a trick. You know, if you don't get your head around it, I, I, I guess it starts with getting your head around. Do you know, I don't care what anybody yeah. thinks. I'm yeah. going to live my life the way I want to. And I'm going to look after myself. Once you love yourself enough to do that, then you'll do the things around the food, yeah, the exercise, the mind. You know, it, it's all part of the package. Mm. Do we want to talk about lubricants and moisturizers? I think we should. <laughs> I think our <laughs> listeners will really want to know about that. Now that we've gone this far. <laughs> if they haven't turned off by now, they want to know, <laughs> but what else could I be doing? So think about lubricants and moisturizers. Moisturizers because you can get, if that skin gets dry, it can get sore. It can be sore just sitting down or going to the loo. So moisturizers just help to keep it nice and moist and not getting dried out. So look at natural moisturizers, look at the ingredients and see what you can find. You can find ones that have got bamboo in them or aloe vera, um, or avocado oil or coconut oil, you know, all of these natural oils can so really look at moisturizers, vaginal moisturizers, not just something you'd slap on your face, although really think about what you're putting on your face and as well. Presumably you can buy that in places like Holland and Barrett then in, in, um, in, um, in um, health shops as well as yeah places like revital um and also you can get them in in chemists as well i think some women feel embarrassed about it yeah. of course now you could just go on amazon and find something that you think is suitable and then if you're looking for a lubricant to use during sex whether you're having sex with a toy or sex on your own or sex with a partner um, having a lubricant can be really helpful because you might just be slower at producing your own vaginal lubricants yeah. and again looking for natural products there is this one always makes me laugh they don't pay me anything for saying it there is an aloe vera one called aloe cadabra i just love <laughs> the name of it <laughs> Um, that sounds good because you see the ones i've tried you know i've tried loads of different lubricants and the trouble is they're really sticky and horrible. You know, yeah. I, I hate it. And um, luckily for me, I'm still very lubricated. It's, it's almost like Niagara Falls, but only when I feel like it. So I have to get, yes. you know, but yeah. Uh, but, be, but before now, um, it has been dry when I've not, you know, I'm really lucky. My husband doesn't really ask me for any. He's, he's 44 and, uh, and he doesn't really think about it. So for me, yeah. I'm actually quite lucky. But, but in the past... Um, when they've wanted it and I've not, you know, getting that lubricant. Actually, I've used it for toys as well, but it just makes everything so sticky. Well, here's the thing. With toys, you have to be a bit more careful 
because some oils can break down the surface of toys. And if you're using condoms, they can break down condoms as well. Mm. Coconut oil is a problem with that. If you're oh. using toys or you're using condoms, don't use coconut oil as a lubricant or a moisturizer because it will, it? It will break it down. Yeah. Well, you've got to think of the acidity that's naturally in these things. Um, so yeah, we do have to be careful. If you don't want to go out and buy something, you can use something like egg whites. Egg white, the mm. consistency of it is very similar it to is. our natural lubricant. And so it's it might get a bit sticky. I'm not sure if you get really frothy <laughs> you're whipping up the egg white. <laughs> <laughs> lemon meringue down there. Yeah, with, all the, with all the friction, yeah, be like, oh my God, we're making lemon meringue. Oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> It just won't be very sweet, that's all, but still probably very tasty. Well, <laughs> I'm not going there. But anyway, not for me, um, but for him. <laughs> so, you know, you don't have to go out and buy something. And egg whites would be very natural. You could use something like natural yogurt. Mm. You know, if you're using a, a, a good natural yogurt, that, that would be helpful. It's fine. And experiment with it. You might not get it right first time. So you might find that some lubricants get very thin very quickly. So you start off and it's going well, and the next minute the lubrication's gone and you've got to reapply and some will be thinner than others. Yeah, it's maybe get the extra more. extra thick, the extra <laughs> thick yogurt, the Greek <laughs> yogurt. <laughs> I think it's got other things in it. So yeah, I getting I, close to the end of our hour here. I wanted to touch on essential oils. Are there any essential oils? I know patchily can bring back that natural pheromone smell, but is there anything else um that you would recommend so your lang lang has always been quite popular for um helping with the libido um with natural oils be careful always sniff them first make sure you're not allergic to them put them in a carrier oil don't apply them directly to your skin um, lavender oil can be really good if you just want to cool down a bit and uh, geranium is very good for balancing the hormones. So it depends what you want to get from it. Um, but always be careful with them. Make sure your partner isn't allergic to them as well. Oh, yeah, of course. Never even thought about that one. Um, brilliant. And the other thing I just wanted to um, touch on is uh, like how to go about together as a couple to get back to like like things like date nights and and um you know and you know we've said before that the best aphrodisiac is actually getting ready to go out and and that's like being a teenager again like when you're seeing someone for the first time it's like getting all excited that is the best aphrodisiac for meeting husband and actually going separate to a restaurant so you see that person because normally you always go in together don't we and you don't look at your partner like you know but when you go in separately you'll be able to see them walk in and think oh you know look looking at that person your husband your your partner just like everybody else is and thinking oh you're a bit of all right it really does make a difference doesn't it it does. And, you know, we started out by talking about communication and conversation, paying compliments, um, being kind to each other. It's very sexy to be kind to somebody, doing the little things for them. And I don't know if you've come across the five love oh, languages. Oh, yes, yes. Makes such you a know, difference. Understanding what your partner, how your partner experiences love, whether it is through the words that you say to them or the little touches that you give them or little gifts. I'm not saying, oh, come in with a box of chocolates and a bunch of flowers. It might just be, you know, they wanted a book or they wanted, you know, um, uh, something to wear and you just get them something little and it just kind of primes the pumps for that intimacy and that caring. So yeah, think about your partner. Think about what you want, what they want. Being able to talk about it. Is they probably what never asked process. that before. They probably never asked that before, have they, Pat? I know no. I asked my husband. So, Tim, how do you feel love? How, how do you feel that I love you? And he goes, touch. Touch yeah. is what really, you know, it's not like I love you. It's not when he make. you know, it's not when I do something for him. It's not if I buy him something. That, for him, is the big, for me, it's a bit of everything, actually. But, yeah. yeah. And it's worth finding out what is it your partner, how does your partner feel love? What is it yeah. and what was it? How did you say it? I say, I say, how do you feel love? And you said. How you have experienced that's love. Experience love. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So brilliant. I know that my husband, it's um, acts of service, which sounds mm. awful. 
But my husband knows he's loved when I take him his cup of tea in yeah, the morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when yeah. I say to him during the day, I come out my office because I work from home and I say to him, do you cup of tea? Anything I can get you? He knows he's loved. Yeah. And if I've gone away on a business trip, when I get back, he knows I'm back when his cup of tea appears. Oh, that's lovely. And it's isn't just it? that. And we had a friend staying here two weekends ago, and she said, You guys are so solid. She said, I can just, it's just in the little things that you do for each other. And she said, You don't call anybody else darling. You're not a darling person. But she said, It's so natural when you said to your husband, drink a cup of tea darling exactly and she said it was so natural and so kind and then he did something kind for you and she said it's just so obvious lovely isn't it? it's beautiful and the thing is is that you you uh, just picking up on on something you just said about talking with love love and from the heart yes. you know like 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 we've all got childhood trauma that comes into relationships. That's why a lot of relationships don't work out because they've got their trauma and the person says something that's triggered their trauma. They've got, the person's got no idea they've done that. Then of course they say something that triggers it and it just becomes a one great big mess and they're all split up. And I always say, if you just talk from loving from the heart and mm. knowing that person doesn't really mean it. Okay, so they don't mean it as in it's not their fault, but they have to take responsibility. But the fact yeah. is, is that if you talk from love in the heart, then it's it's not going to get bad, is it? And 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 at the end of the day, you're a loving couple. Why would you say horrible words to each other anyway? So yeah, yeah. and that's what I you know. He says, my husband says to me, "Would you like a cup of coffee?" We only say "chéri," mon chéri, to each other. He's mon chéri, and I'm his ma chérie. That's it. I don't ever call him by his name except when I'm talking about him to someone else. You know, not nasty when I say about yeah. talking about him. Um, so listen, uh, thank you so, so much, Pat. It's, it's lovely to have fun. you here. Oh, it has. And you know what? I know that uh, our listeners um, will really, really appreciate every single word that you've said. So listen, how can people contact you? So it's really easy. I have a patduckworth.com website and there is a contact part on that. Um, if you are looking for more help for your menopause and you just want to dip your toe in the water, my book, Hot Women, Cool Solutions, you can find it on Amazon and you'll find lots of tips in there. But if you just want to have a 30-minute chat with me, come to patduckworth.com. Great. Um, thank you, Pat. And uh, listen, everyone, just go and see Pat because she's amazing. <laughs> now, what I'd like to ask you, one more last question for you is... Uh, if you were able to meet the young 18-year-old you again, what would you advise? I'd give her a big old hug and say, keep going, you're doing brilliantly, because the woman I am today is all the actions my 18-year-old self took and every age since then. I've got so much respect for what my younger selves did that have allowed me to do what I do today. So I would like kiss my younger self's feet and say, keep going. You're doing <laughs> brilliantly. I love you. Oh, that's lovely advice. I really love that. OK, so there you are, folks. Have fabulous conversation there. I love Pat. We'll have to bring you back another time for the next audience that we have. Um, for any freebies. Have you got any freebies, by the way? Is it the well, free call? Yeah, if they go to hotwomencoolsolutions.com, you'll see there's a whole load of freebies on the right-hand side of the homepage. There's lots of um, relaxations, hypnotic recordings, things to help with sleep, etc. Go grab them. And repeat that again for ladies that didn't catch that. It's hotwomencoolsolutions.com. It's the name of the book. It's the book website. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much. So if you want to know more about this, go to sexplosionpodcast.com. I've got some freebies there too. DM me here, Facebook, Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Oh my God. I have never had so much engagement in my whole social media career. It's uh, at, sexplo at Caroline Sexplosion um, on TikTok. Next, um, next, the next podcast on the 7th of May, we have Jackie Grant. You've had Jackie Grant on yours Yay, before. Yay, love Jackie's Jackie. I love Jackie too. And she's going to come. Um, she deals with balancing women's hormones and habits through nutrition and exercise. So again, it's really going to help you if you you are doing if you're in the menopause too so i hope you enjoyed listening this week i will see you all next month take care and to your sex sex ladies and gentlemen <laughs> bye <laughs> welcome podcasters to 
Sexplosion. My name is Caroline Shenye and I'm your coach on all things intimacy, relationships, sex and super consciousness. This is my podcast teaching you about how to sexually liberate yourself to be confident, spicy, and